Welcome to our lecture line. In this example, we're going to redo the problem with the runner, where the runner was trying to run 10 kilometers, 10,000 meters in 30 minutes, which, by the way, is quite a feat to do. And after 27 minutes, he realizes he's behind schedule. He's only covered a distance of 8,900 meters after 27 minutes have elapsed, which means he only has three minutes left to cover 1,100 meters. So for how long must he accelerate to a new speed at 0.2 meters per second square and then maintain that final speed in order to accomplish his goal. So instead of doing this graphically, in this example we're going to do it simply using the equations. We use the graph so we can understand what is really happening. So he's traveling at some initial velocity for the first 27 minutes, which is 1,620 seconds, and he covers a distance of 8,900 meters. Then he increases his speed, he accelerates. The acceleration is equal to 0.2 meters per second squared. And so then he reaches a new final velocity. He maintains that for the remainder of the race. He spends T1 seconds to get to the new speed and T2, and T2 seconds then to finish the race. And T2 is therefore 180 seconds, the three minutes he has left, minus the time spent to accelerate. So knowing all that, where do we begin? Well, the first thing we want to do is find some ex expressions for V initial and V final, the velocity he keeps for the first 27 minutes and then the velocity he keeps for the last portion of the race. So we can say that distance is equal to velocity times time. So velocity is equal to distance divided by time. So the initial velocity will be the distance covered, which is 8,900 meters in the time of 1,620 seconds. And with a calculator, we can find out what that is equal to. 8,900 divided by 1,620, that's just about 5.5 meters per second. So this is the initial velocity. We can put that on here, 5.5. And of course, velocity is gonna be in meters per second, and time is going to be in seconds. Okay, now we want to calculate the final velocity in terms of the initial velocity. So we can say that uh, final velocity is going to be equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration over here times the amount of time he spends doing that acceleration. Let's call that T1. So since we know what V initial is, we can say that V final is going to be equal to V initial, which is 5.5 meters per second plus the acceleration times the time he spends doing the acceleration. So here now we have an expression for V final as well as we have for V initial. Now the next thing we want to do is realizing that during this time period and during this time period together, he covers a distance of 1100 meters. So in other words, we can say that the distance covered, let's call this distance one right here, or let's call this, well, I call this T1, didn't I? Hmm. We'll call this T2 and T3. We'll call it T2 and T3. So T3 is equal to 100 sec 180 seconds minus T2. We call this here T1, which is 27 minutes. So I'll call this D1, call this D2, and call this D3. And then we probably have to, uh, so this is 1-1. One, one and we'll call that two and two, so we keep our subscripts in a way that we can follow what we're doing. That might be a better way to write it like that. Okay, once we do that, we can say that distance one, uh, no, distance two plus distance three is equal to 1100 meters. So now somehow we have to come up with expressions so that we add these two distances together and we cover 1100 meters. Now, for distance two, we realize that we are accelerating. So for that, we're going to need the following equation. We're going to need x is equal to x sub naught plus v sub naught in the x direction times time plus one half a t squared. So we can call the initial distance for that time period, we call it equal to zero because we're going to start over there. So the distance travel is going to be the velocity it has over here times the time that we spend doing that velocity, plus the acceleration, have the acceleration, times the time squared.
So what we're going to do here for D2 now is plug in what we have over here. So we can write this as V initial times time plus one half the acceleration times time squared. It is of course is T2, that's the time period of that second segment. Now distance three, we're moving at a constant velocity. So that distance is simply velocity times time, but now that will be the final velocity times T3 and T3 can now be expressed in terms of 180 minus T2, and that should add up to 1100. Now when we take a look at this equation, we realize that we know the initial velocity, we don't know the time T2, that's an unknown, the acceleration is known, and the V final could be written in terms of the V initial plus the acceleration times time. So completely eliminating all variables except for time. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have V initial times T2 plus one half A T2 squared plus, instead of writing V final, we're going to write V initial plus A T. V initial plus A times T multiplied times 180 minus T2. And of course, this will be T2. That equals 11, 1100. There we go. And now what we have here is an equation that only has one unknown t, time. And of course, t2, that would be the time for this time period right there. Once we know that, everything else can be easily calculated. So let's now plug in all the numbers here and see what we get. So v initial is 5.5 times t2 plus 1 half a, that would be plus 0 0.1 times t2 squared. Go ahead and put parentheses around that. Okay, now we have plus V initial, that would be 5.5 plus 0.2 T2, and that's multiplied times 180 minus T2, and that equals 1100. It looks like we're going to end up with a quadratic equation, and we'll have to solve that. So let's go ahead and multiply everything through. So that gives us 5.5 T2 plus 0.1 t2 squared. Now here, plus 5.5 times 180. So 5.5 times 180, that gives us 990. 990. 5.5 times this, that's minus 5.5 times t2. This times this, that would be uh, plus 36 times t2. And this times this, that would be minus 0.2 T2 squared. And then minus 1100 equals to zero, because I want to move everything over to one side. Okay, now let's combine like terms. We have 5.5 T2 minus 5.5 T2, so these co cancel out. A plus 0.1 and a minus 0.2, that gives me a minus 0.1 t2 squared, so that takes care of the t2 terms. We have plus 36 t2, and then minus, plus 990, minus 1100, that's minus 110 equals zero. I'm going to multiply everything by a negative 10 to get rid of that decimal here, and the negative. So that gives us t2 squared minus 360 t2, and plus 1100 equals zero. And so now I have a nice quadratic equation that I can solve for T2. Kind of running out of board space, but we could probably manage here. So I'm gonna put a little line here. So keep it clean, put a line there, keep it clean. So I'm going to solve this equation for T2 to see what we get. Okay, we have 360 or T2 is equal to 360, that would be the negative of the middle term, plus or minus the square root of 360 squared minus 4 times A, which is 1, times C, which is a positive 1100, and the whole thing divided by twice A, which is 2. Notice here that if we get a negative number here, we probably did something wrong. So let's take 360 squared minus 4400. And that's a positive number, so we're in good shape. Take the square root, we get 353.84. So 
So this is equal to 360 plus or minus 353.84 divided by 2. And notice the only plausible answer here is when I subtract, because when I add, I get a huge number. It doesn't fit into 180, so that's not possible. So it's the minus portion. So minus add 360 divided by 2, and I get a time of 3.08 seconds. That means T2 equals 3.08 seconds, which means that T3 is equal to 180 minus that. That would be 176.92 seconds, because after all, T3 right here is 180 minus T2. So now they have the three times I have answered the question. It says, for how long must they accelerate at 0.2 meters per second square and then maintain that final speed to make it in 30 minutes? He needs to accelerate for three seconds at 0.2 meters per second square so that for the last, for the last 177 seconds, he can then maintain that new speed and make it in 30 minutes. If you want to then find out what your final velocity is, you simply take 0.2 times T2 and um, yep, that will then tell you everything about the runner. But at least we've answered a question and it can be done using equations of kinematics just like that. And that's how we do that.